Some of the key factors in selecting a, a uniform for snipers, and we have to understand that this, as a sniper, you're going to train with the, uh, the entire SWAT team, but you're going to act differently. You're going to dress differently, and you have to because that's, uh, your mission defines that. For uniforms, if the, if the rest of the entry team is wearing black or wearing the urban camouflage or whatever they're wearing, uh, for your mission, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you need to wear. And sometimes it's hard to get that through to uh, the chain of command because they want the team uh, to be unified and all wearing the same thing, which uh, there's a lot to be said for that. But again, we're looking at officer safety and your role as a sniper. Overall, the best to wear is the, uh, the olive, dab, olive drab green. Um, I know that a lot of uh, the bigger full-time teams or agencies use that because it's universal both in urban and rural, uh, and it's easy to get a hold of. Uh, if you get a rip or something, it's easy to repair, and uh, you can order from just about any of the, uh, uh, the surplus catalogs that are available. Probably one of the absolute worst things for a sniper to wear is the urban camouflage. Uh, this was originally designed for snow, um, and it's uh, what they did. It was originally designed for snow, and they just added in the uh, uh, kind of lighten up the colors. But this is probably one of the worst things that a sniper can wear. It's fine for entry teams, but as a sniper, this sticks out like a sore thumb just about anywhere you go. Uh, again, it's it's made of the, the same military type uh, material as far as a 50-50 blend of uh, poly and cotton. But this is going to stick out because the three things that a sniper wants to avoid is uh, shine, contrast, and outline. Well, this has two of the three. This has the contrast and the outline. This will stick out. Um, the only thing worse than this, uh, I say this is absolute worst, this is, I think it's tied with the, the all black. Black is great for entry teams, but again, it goes against the, uh, it has almost all three of the three things that a sniper uh, can't do, and because if he does, he'll get compromised, and that's the shine, contrast, and outline. And those three things come from the Marine Corps sniping manual, so none of this stuff is original for me. It's all been plagiarized uh, from the experts who are uh, the Marine Corps or the military. Black will create a shine. Nothing in nature is perfectly black. Some have a man-made black. Uh, if uh, you counter sniper who knows what to look for, they're going to stick right out. And you can see just by sitting here, black against just about any other color. We've got some light tans and some, uh, some chaparral colors here. Uh, it just sticks out uh, like you can't believe. Uh, it's great, again, for entry teams because it's going to... Uh, uh, it's going to elicit that violence of action when they kick in a door, but in your and if you have to uh, be in the sunlight somewhere, this is going to attract the heat. Uh, it's going to create the shine. It's going to create an outline, uh, and it's going to uh, create contrast, and that's going to compromise you as a sniper. Uh, another good, uh, you either have the uh, the chocolate chip style desert camouflage, which is good because it's light um, as far as the colors go, and or you can go with the three color uh, camouflage. Desert camouflage. Uh, advantage is this: is if you got something that's light, it's easier to get dark. As far as darken up you and darken up your position, it's easier to do that as opposed to uh, trying to lighten up. If you get to a black, it's virtually uh, impossible to lighten up you or your position to blend in. Again, if you're in an area like this where you have uh, kind of a high chaparral type um, uh, tans and, and yellows and so forth. Another one of the choices to wear for uniforms for a sniper would be just your standard woodland camouflage. Uh, very easy to get. It's sold just about everywhere. It comes at the 50-50 blend as well as the 100% ripstop cotton, depending on where you're located and the weather and so forth. Uh, you'd have to pick your best, um, your best selection. What I've done is, as opposed to uh, bringing a shooting mat out with me, which uh, tactically is unsound, um, the best thing you can do is go with... Uh, take some uh, burlap or tent material and uh, just take some shoe goo, cut it out, and now you've got your shooting mat with you. So if I have to lie on some rocks, protect me. If I got to lie on a, a hot pavement somewhere, this is also going to protect me. You can do the same thing with the pants as well. I haven't done it on these pants, but uh, uh, basically what you've done is you've taken a shooting mat with you. Very successful, uh, and it works really well. Uh, the cover I like to go with would be just your standard uh, green floppy cover. Um, green again because it's universal you can go with the, the woodland camouflage but the nice thing about this is uh, it's very practical it keeps the uh, sunlight off of you it keeps um, the radio and it breaks up the outline of your your head your most important thing 
Um, again, it goes back to not creating an outline or a contrast. Uh, you want to, to break it up as well as provide you with uh, protection and of course the ultimate thing is to provide you with camouflage. Your boot selection is going to be also uh, be extremely important because uh, uh, if your feet are comfortable, you're usually comfortable. The best thing that I can recommend is one of the either, either Israeli or U.S. Uh, or German desert boots. Very comfortable, uh, easy to get a hold of and not that expensive. Um, you can tell mine are pretty worn in. It's a real good pair of boots. They've got a good traction on the bottom. And the best thing again is they blend in. That's very important. If you've got uh, black boots, um, these are going to stick out like sore thumbs, plus they're kind of shiny. If you have to wear black boot because your chain of black boots because your chain of command says that uh, it's black boots because that's going to be SOP, at very least, scuff them up, get them as dirty as possible so you're within your department or your, uh, your SWAT team uh, regulations, but they're not going to give your position away. Uh, boots are very important to keep, if they're black, keep them uh, scuffed up, keep them as muddy and dirty as possible so you don't create that, uh, that outline, that shine, and that contrast. But to reemphasize, the best way to go would be with a desert boot. They're comfortable, uh, and, they, and it's easier to darken up than it is to, uh, uh, to try to get something lighter. Uh, another thing I like to do, and this just comes from being a, a former Marine, is that is I'll wear, I'll blouse the boots up. And just a simple way of, uh, you get a boot blouse, and you just tuck your, your, uh, your pants in underneath, and it's called blousing them up. Some of the advantages of this is you don't have the extra uh, floating around, the extra at the bottom of your pant leg floating around. You also, it looks very professional. It looks, uh, uh, it looks sharp, basically. And if you're portraying an image, whether you're on the range or so forth, uh, snipers can kind of do what they want uh, as far as uniform selection uh, because uh, they need to select something that, that fits their needs. But if you, if you blouse up the boots, it looks good. Plus, in a worst case scenario, you can use, take the blouse, blouses off if you need to strap a equipment onto a pack uh, or use it for uh, any kind of odd job. It's like uh, a very versatile uh, rubber band and um, uh, it's, a, it's a great piece of equipment if you need it both for medical aid as well as for, um, for just strapping gear down, etc. Some essential equipment to carry uh, in your, your sniper bag or call out bag or drag bag, whatever you call it. Um, and these are just basics, these are just ideas. But again, you got to remember, as a sniper, you're only limited by your creativity and your imagination. Here's some ideas that I've picked up from other uh, uh, law enforcement snipers from both the, the city, state, uh, federal level, as well as for uh, foreign and uh, uh, U.S. Uh, military snipers. For the good bag, this, uh, this is an, just your standard Alice pack, which stands for uh, all-purpose, lightweight, individual carrying equipment. I've had this Alice pack since about 1983 uh, in the Marine Corps and it's been all over the world with me and it still holds, holds up really well. Uh, the, the great thing about these is they're versatile. They have a lot of different compartments to hold uh, gear and equipment as well as outside belts that are actually sewn onto the pack to, uh, to attach equipment, canteens or uh, a first aid pouch. They also have uh, on the bottom where you can uh, hook on extra uh, straps so forth uh, to carry additional gear if you're going to strap a, a poncho or something to the bottom of your, your Alice pack. What I've done is I've thrown in a little bit of uh, netting here and there and some burlap just to break up the outline of the pack. Inside the pack you've got a couple of different compartments for, uh, uh, for your gear. And so as long as it, that it's itemized and you know where it, if it's at night you can reach in, you know what you're reaching for, you know where it's at. There's three outside pouches with, uh, with uh, a, uh, like a hidden compartment behind each that you can slide gear into uh, as well as a compartment in the, the lid of the Alice pack where I carry a, uh, a compass and a, uh, a, a temperature reader. Uh, Alice packs are great. All, they're just uh, it's a really good piece of equipment because they're versatile and you can carry all your gear in it. What I've done is uh, I've taken some old towels, uh, kitchen towels, I've wrapped them around and put some of the green duct tape and brown duct tape on there. Just loosens uh, uh, if you're going to have wear an Alice pack for a long time, you want this on there. It just kind of uh, helps ease the, uh, the stress on your shoulders. Some of the gear I'll carry in the Alice pack, um, or I'll carry with the Alice pack, is the, uh, just a, 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 a big duffel bag or a call-out bag that you can leave at the command post. And the benefit of this is things that you want to just drop down and grab out of this, um, put on your uniform or, or your boots or whatever you've got in here, and you can grab your Alice pack and go. The key thing is to have everything accessible, ready, and you know where it's at. 
Some things I'll put inside an Alice pack. Uh, I always carry a couple of sniper veils. These are your East German sniper veils. We also have a French sniper veil. And these are everything from a tourniquet to providing a sun to breaking up the outline of the rifle in your body. You can never have too many sniper veils. And I usually carry three uh, in your Alice pack or on your body. I also carry one or more uh, just OD green towels just for general purpose for either wep weapons maintenance, uh, wiping sweat, uh, getting face paint on or off. Um, just nice to have an extra towel or, that you can use uh, for all purpose. I never go anywhere without a, a good roll of uh, OD green 100 mile an hour tape. It's uh, uh, non-reflective and for strapping down gear to keeping uh, to take shine off of gear. It also keeps uh, a lot of your gear quiet if you strap it down uh, well enough. Uh, always carry a uh, just a basic uh, notepad. Uh, inside with some extra pens and pencils and we'll get to some of the, the uh, uh, some of the other gear later as far as uh, diagrams and making uh, field sketches. Uh, you can carry any, any type size uh, you want whatever's most convenient for you just for, for taking notes at the command post or when you get out in your sniper position. I like to carry some good uh, uh, camouflage both for my rifle when you camouflage your rifle as well as if you need to spot camouflage something you can get the uh, the smaller, the larger containers. They're flat colors and the earthy colors, which are good. Uh, I carry some uh, bug juice or uh, insect repellent, which is good, especially uh, in a lot of areas uh, all over the world, uh, different times of the year. I'll carry uh, some face paint and a, uh, a little mirror inside of a protective uh, uh, container. So it keeps the mirror. I've had this mirror, I think, for about 15 years, and it, uh, it's still doing its job. I carry an extra, uh, and this will get when we get into the shooting part of uh, the video. I carry an extra um, scope. I slip this over my scope so I can shoot with both eyes open. But I always like to have two. I keep one with my in my bag, in my drag bag, as well as one in my Alice pack. I'll keep extra ammunition uh, when I'm shooting on the range, and I find a, a lot of am ammunition. In this case, it's uh, it's Federal Gold Medal uh, 308, 168 grain uh, Sierra Botel ammo. I'll find a good lot that shoots really well, so I'll take a box of that and I'll put it aside. Also carry a of the um, breeze ammunition, which is basically uh, good for uh, different types of shooting. I'm not going to get into ballistics, but I carry two, two different types of ammunition. I'll carry a, uh, a bandana, which is great that I just slip over my neck, which uh, protects me from the sun, also breaks up the outline, and uh, where the face paint stops, this starts. I'll carry sun, speaking of sun, some sun protective, uh, 30 to 50 proof, which uh, for fair skinned people really helps out, especially summertime. And I can apply this where there isn't any face paint or uh, if I'm in a situation where I'm not wearing face paint, but I'm out in the sun. I'll carry, and there's, uh, I usually carry two, but we've added this just to show the variation of uh, sandbags because I don't use and uh, I uh, don't uh, advocate using a, uh, a bipod on your rifle I'll shoot with the one sandbag on top of my Alice pack, which I shop up, and one behind for the, the, the stock of the weapon. And with very good results, these sandbags, uh, they're easy to make. Uh, you can make them any size, and you can fill it not only with sand. If you're concerned about weight, you can fill it with bean bags, uh, I'm sorry, with beans or with uh, experiment. There's all different types of things with weights and textures you can use, and just basically your choice. Again, as a sniper, you need to be in control as to what you're carrying and why to make sure that the equipment is for you. I carry at least one, if not two, smoke grenades. And uh, in talking with other snipers, both military and police, if you get compromised, the last thing I want to be able to do is not be able to get them out of my position. If you have an officer down scenario and you have to break your position um, to throw some, some smoke to do an officer rescue, it's just good to have a couple of smoke grenades. Just make sure you know how to use them, practice with them, because uh, you want to employ them correctly so that it doesn't work against you. And again, a little piece of black or green uh, duct tape over the, f the, the, the pin just to ensure that you're not going to have an accidental discharge of the smoke grenade. I'll carry, and these come in black. It's the only color I had or they could buy them in, so I kind of cammed them up a little bit, is both knee pads and elbow pads, which are good for if you're going to have to be in a position overlooking a parapet uh, on top of a rooftop, or any position where you've, you need elbow or knee pads, you can strap them to the outs pack and you will have, uh, they're readily accessible to take on and off. I carry just a, a quick knife um, for, for cutting things. Um, it's always have just a good knife 
that's uh, handy and available. I'll carry one or two sidearms, either a 45 Smith & Wesson or a 38. Uh, and again, that's a uh, personal preference. I carry some uh, uh, some fire high uh, Illum sticks uh, just for general purpose. Uh, probably never going to need them, but I like to have extra gear that, of course, these don't weigh anything that, uh, that I have in my arsenal if I need them. A watch, I usually take my watch off my, my wrist when I'm in a position and I'll hook it onto a belt loop because I don't want this watch uh, shining and reflecting. And if I need to know what time it is, I can just look down at my belt look or I can hook it to any part of my gear on my Alice pack so I can see, uh, what, you know, check on the times when I'm, when I'm calling in from my position. Uh, but again, I don't want it so it's shining off of the, uh, uh, it's not reflecting off of the sun. I'll carry my sling with me. Uh, it's always good to have a rifle sling in, that, uh, in a situation where you can't get into a nice uh, prone position somewhere and you need to, uh, to do an offhand shot either from the, uh, the prone or from the, the sitting, kneeling or standing. You want to have your sling and of course you want to be trained with the sling so you know how to use it and employ it correctly. Um, <clears throat> as far as chow goes, uh, probably one of the best things on the market is just taking an MRE along. Uh, these, are, these last from five to, to six years, seven years. Um, and they're actually, they got a lot of uh, calories in them, and the way they're making them today versus when they first came out, they actually taste pretty good. You've got, uh, what I've done is I've taken uh, several MREs and I've broken down, because uh, the MREs are good, but there's some stuff in here you're not going to enjoy eating, so you don't want to be humping that around if you're not going to eat it. So what I've done is I've broken down a few MREs and just taken what I like out of it, including the heaters, and um, so now i got my own little uh, two or three days worth of MREs in one little bag. Uh, for as far as uh, sketching equipment, I'll carry uh, several uh, pencils with uh, erasers as well as a couple of pens inside a protective case, which is this is a toothbrush holder. Inside here, you can carry uh, carry a book for uh, keeping uh, logs when you get into a position. Um, and again, this goes back to your department's SOP and what your chain of command wants, but you can also buy generic, already laminated range cards. Uh, there's, uh, there's logs to, for guiding you as far as making your, your field sketches and range cards. And I keep it all in a, in a nice little folder. This is a map case that I've kind of modified. In the back, I keep uh, a template that is uh, made for snipers. And again, this is all kind of modified. I had a little bit of fun putting this together because again, and I can't emphasize this enough, as a sniper, you're going to need to be uh, creative. You're going to need, your, need to use your imagination. Always have a good belt uh, strap. Uh, this is a belt, but also works as a good strap just for general purpose for attaching equipment on if you need it. Uh, you can either wear a pair of, uh, you can get a good shooting glove. Um, a bicycle glove works great for, uh, for your trigger finger hand. Uh, with the pad, it'll keep uh, the, the pulse of your hand off of the, the stock of the rifle. And if you know someone who's left-handed, you can buy a pair and you can give them the left hand and you keep the right for left-handed shooters. Or you can just wear a pair of just uh, regular gardening gloves, cut them up, break up the outline a little bit, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, as far as field expediency, if you're not going to be, can't shoot off your pack or if you need a, uh, a, a platform to shoot off of, your imagination. This is basically some doweling put together with some, some rubber uh, uh, stubs on the bottom. And then, of course, of course, I wrap some burlap and a little bit of tape around it. So I've got a field expedient uh, shooting platform if I need it. Always carry a good uh, poncho uh, for pouring down rain to keep you out of the sun. But in an urban environment, really important because you can set this up behind you in a building um, just with a little bit of duct tape on the wall so that if you've most homes inside, you've got light colored walls, white or white, um, and you and your green or uh, hopefully not black, but in whatever you're wearing, you don't want to contrast against that. So if you put this up behind you, um, then it, you, you'll blend in, you'll look a lot better. Uh, and again, you won't have to worry about uh, contrasting um, or creating an outline inside the, the building, inside the room you're in. And we've also got for a smaller operation, or same thing, I've got uh, I carry a good knife, a flashlight, a couple of canteens, and just your standard, what's known as a butt pack. Uh, I recommend getting the full cotton butt pack because the nylon ones do not last as long. But uh, this is just a quick, I can run out and throw this gear on. I can wear this underneath my Alice pack if it's going to be an extended operation. Or I can just, uh, if it's going to be a, a quick operation, a quick patrol, I can grab this and go and I can put a majority of this, this stuff in here. I can also boot, I can shoot off the top of it by put, placing my rifle on top. 
And last but not least, I'll carry, because it's uh, they're very versatile and uh, lightweight, is just your standard um, um, poncho liner. And you can cram that just about anywhere because of it, uh, its durability and it's, uh, the way it's designed. You can cram it just about into any crevice in your Alice pack. And it's good to have, again, if, you're, if you wanted something to shoot off of or for warmth or general purpose. I'd rather have it than not. It's not, that, it's not an issue of weight or size uh, or bulkiness in carrying. One of the outstanding enhancements the camouflage uniforms we've uh, talked about is what's known as a ghillie suit. Um, a very, a very uh, essential piece of equipment for police snipers as well as for military snipers. We're going to run you through a quick gauntlet here of some of the pros and cons and some of the good and bad things about ghillie suits from uh, the makeshift to uh, something that's uh, some dedication and time has been put behind it. Uh, the first thing, we'll start off with the worst case scenario. This is a commercial, uh, civilian version type ghillie suit for hunting. <clears throat> you can tell it's got the big uh, hole in the middle that you slip your head through, like, kind of like a poncho. And I'm sure this serves its purpose for hunters, uh, but for, for, for a sniper use, it's, it's, uh, it's almost counterproductive. It's so impractical. You're going to have this type of netting. It's going to catch every kind of bush and leaf as it goes along. And it's going to make noise. It's going to leave a real signature noise, but with movement. Plus, as you can hear, I mean, this just makes a lot of noise. It's synthetic uh, type uh, uh, rubber, and it will break up the outline of the body. I guess if, if you had to and you want to drape this over your gear or you in a position, that could work. But for the most part, it's, it's too bulky, uh, it's too loud, um, and the actual material is, is even almost to the point of reflective. It's not going to be flat enough. Um, it's also come. You can flip it over so there's a bit of a ver variation in the colors. But for the most part, you really want to stay away from something like this unless it's a worst case scenario and this is all you got, then, then go ahead and run with it. But I advise against it. What we've done here is taken some, uh, some of the civilian netting <clears throat> and we've added a little bit of burlap to it. What you can do is take some spray paint and spray paint it on to kind of break up the, the color pattern. Just this little bit of burlap will add just to, just break it up just enough so it doesn't look like that uh, uh, synthetic fake uh, type uh, camouflage netting, which is really what it is. If you've got a counter sniper or someone who knows about camouflage, uh, whether they learned it from a uh, from military or they learned it just from reading books, uh, and they know what to look for, be able to spot you in something like this. Again, this is just one notch above the worst case scenario, um, uh, but uh, use your creativity and put a little bit of time and effort into camouflaging yourself correctly uh, because of the officer safety factors involved for police and for the military factors of, uh, of keeping yourself hidden, covered, and concealed. Moving up the, uh, the food chain as far as uh, ghillie suits go, uh, this is a field expedient ghillie suit that I put together in the Marine Corps uh, back about 10 years ago, uh, which would have been about 1986, uh, uh, 87, and I made this in an afternoon. I was on a detail where they said, uh, uh, for a VIP protection scenario, they said you need someone needs a, to put together a ghillie suit. And uh, I said, well, I'll do it. Basically what I did is I just took some burlap uh, strips and some shoe goo and made just a, a quick ghillie suit to, to cover. <clears throat> the advantage of this is, again, the outline of the body just enough. And if this is the type of terrain you're in, this used to be green, but it's kind of fading now. But if this type of terrain you're in, you're going to blend in. And if you have to, you can use uh, a spray paint or whatever to, uh, to darken or lighten this up. And of course, the best thing is uh, natural vegetation. Stick some natural vegetation in here or, or up in the front part, and you're going to have, uh, uh, you're going to blend in a lot better. But uh, some of the key things that we're going to be going over uh, as we uh, go along the lines of ghillie suits here is natural vegetation is the best to use, uh, but it's an ongoing process. Uh, camouflage is an art that is constantly ongoing. Uh, to, to maintain your cover and concealment. What we have here is a, a, a really, uh, at least the, the, the ghillie or the camouflage part of it, this was uh, put together by a Marine for us, and what you've done, or what he's done, is taken burlap and stripped it down into have individual fibers or threads of burlap. This does is even break up the, the outline even more. This would be for a, a wood, a seriously wooded area or a tundra type area where you're going to have a lot of these dark greens like this. Um, the front of, the, of this particular jacket of the ghillie suit has been sewn on uh, some, uh, again, the tent material, 
which is going to provide a better mat uh, to pat. It's also going to provide you with uh, the ability for doing a stalking. Uh, if you're involved in a, a stalking incident or an incident where you're going to be a training and you need to, to, to do uh, some stalking, some sliding, so forth, this is going to protect your chest, so forth. Uh, this is combined with just a regular floppy cover, military style woodland hat or cover, and uh, some netting sewn onto the top of it. And the netting is attached to the top of the hat, and then a brook is uh, tied onto that. And it's just woven in that, that you're comfortable with and that looks good. Um, <clears throat> on the back of this, what's happened as well is that the netting uh, from the uh, has been sewn into the actual jacket. So you're going to have uh, two types of protection here. You're going to have where this is sewn in so it's going to stay on. And you're going to have the netting uh, and the burlap attached to that. Now one of the advantages, of course, all on the back, um, one of the advantages, even though you have netting, and if you're thinking about, well, I'm going to be picking up twigs and, and branches and, as I go, if it's on your back, you're not going to have that problem because you're either going to be sliding on your stomach or you're going to be in a crouched position. If you have something that drapes all over you with, with uh, holes, um, that can pick up stuff like we you saw in some of the other camouflage patterns or uh, the netting, the, both the civilian and the military. This, you avoid that because when you're sliding, everything's on your back and you're not going to be as concerned about picking stuff up as you go along.